I'm doing very well, thank you. What do we have on tap for tonight? Tonight we have all sorts of great um, performers, some from far away and some local talent, and you're just going to be amazed at all the talent that we gather up here at Cavalcade. Enjoy the show. Can I have a virtual milk dud? Yes. <laughs> How does it virtually work? I don't know, it's just virtually amazing. It can just be mm. points, like points. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Okay, Here, keep this. <laughs> and hello, sound man. Hello. And some bumper music into it is great. Yeah, but should you talk about what? Welcome to Capital Cake. Yes, please. There's snacks in the back? Yep. Okay. Good evening, folks. How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Cavalcade. I think it's safe to take off my mask now. Yeah. Oh, dang, it's so funny. Live is okay, but this isn't. <laughs> I'll try it one more time. <laughs> you should never have an option to redo. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Cavalcade Monthly Variety Show. And welcome to you folks who are at home watching this. I'll remind you that there's snacks in your cupboard. Plenty of snacks. Good thing we're saving all that money on gas because you're spending it all on groceries. Think of all the fuel points. Anyway, this is a show we do once a month here at Cavalcade. Cavalcade is a all volunteer not for profit venue here in downtown Fruit of Colorado. And we're going to get right to the music. When's our first act, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> it's good though. She's going. And up first, give it up for Tori and Kenton. Day 18 of quarantine. Take 9,000. And 28. Shh. Rats, quiet. The rats are being loud. once a month. We don't usually do it like this. We usually have people in the seats. 
Um, this is how this venue exists because of this show. This, uh, this funds our little venture here. So welcome, and uh, as soon as we get out of this thing, maybe you can come check out our next show live in person. We're going to get right back to the music and bring you Kim and Nita Benham. Give it up for Kim and Nita, everybody. Well, I need to drink this. Take 100. Not quite.
station They take you very far Successful conversation They take you very far Successful conversation Take you very far variety show. One thing we pride ourselves on is sound, and we've got some great new speakers in-house, donated by our friend Don Walker, down at Don Walker Audio. And if you're home, like I've been at home, listening to my computer speakers, thinking it's time to get my stereo, my dream stereo put together, I need a little help, support the people that support Cavalcade and give Don Walker a call and uh, see if he can help you. Yeah, give it up for Tom Walker, everybody. Way to go, Tom. All right, we're going to get right back into the show. We're going to bring you a great friend of Cavalcade, Greg Luck. Give it up for Greg, everybody. <laughs> Mickey, 
Looking back on the memory of a dance we shared beneath the stars above for a moment oh, the world was right how could I have known you'd ever say goodbye now I'm glad I Way it all would end, the way it all would go. Our lives are better left to chance. I might have missed the pain, but I have had to miss the dance. Holding you, I have everything for a moment wasn't I king if I'd only known how the king would fall then who's to say I might have chased it all and now I'm glad I didn't know where it all would end Our lives are better left to chance I could have missed the pain But I'd have had to miss the dance Well, how about that? Give it up for Mickey, everybody. <laughs> well, we call this variety show because it's not all about the music. Although the music is pretty good. But we're going to bring you some variety here, and we're going to bring out our friend Kevin and put him on. Give it up for Kevin, everybody. Just away from one of the old houses, the father said, in the sprawl, every corner was occupied by a corporate store. What house? The boy asked, his eyes Thin skin of his eyelids drawing closed, opening again, his fight to stay awake. Near Wadsworth and Colfax, where we first brought you home, the father said. It was home at that point in our lives. Tell me not, in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers. And things are not what they seem. A Psalm of Life, Longfellow, verses 2 through 5. When all <laughs> we lived all over that town, no doubt. But it was the Blue House. That's where you came home for the first time. We called it Casa Azul. Stay awake, keep up with me, son. Help me write this, please. Dad, I'm so tired, the boy said, gripping his pillow. Dad, I love you. Good night. The boy shut his eyes. As he lay there, his hand slipped from the grip of the pillow and instinctively went to rubbing his eyes, fingers moving down the skin of his neck just above the collarbone. He started pinching and rubbing his neck. All these ways that we self comfort, the father thought to himself. Now, in his anxiety, the father felt helpless. It all seemed perilous. Yet he knew there was a default of anxiety. Even something as natural as rubbing your eyes became a sickening portent. The father's stomach began turning with turmoil. I feel sick, he thought to himself. I am sick, knowing that he was out of work. And it wouldn't be long, barring some miracle, that the money would run out. Fast asleep, the boy rolled to his side, and his father stared at the boy, continuing to talk as if the boy were listening. We brought 
sister home to the orange house on Lipan Street. We called that one Casa Naranja, the father said with a dry laugh. There was an old crab apple tree in the side yard of the blue house, with its stout trunk, deep and dark, sloping into the terraced earth. In the west, we wait for spring. We wait for the snow to break, for the melt to come. You pools and reservoirs and dams higher up. Some flows east, some flows west. But we wait for it. Everyone is waiting for something. A subtle shift, a drastic shift. Years ago in the blue house, the father simply waited for the pink flowers to bloom. Part of me to blossom, to bloom, come spring and unfolding. A time lapse of the mind, the fragrance, clusters of buds on the branches of the crab apple tree, flickering in the new light, a flutter of the breeze, watching the petals fall with the spring rain, the turning of the releasing the mountain melt, the water flowing, streaming through the canals, weeds sprouted fast from the banks of the canals. All this time we spend waiting, the father's mind incessantly ruminating on this thought, thick black grooves of the sheath, the trunk of the tree, roots stretching deep into the ground, the tree's gnarled boughs stretching, creating a shallow canopy. There was a Walgreens on the corner, the father said. I never understood a grid like your mother does, so I can't pretend to know the exact location. But there was a Walgreens. Probably still is. Kipling and Colfax must have been. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, Being hated, don't give way to hating. If Kipling, verses five through seven. The store of Walgreens, the kind that he promises there will be drive-through testing at. The father said, "Not that we can what? go anywhere anytime soon, but we should Google it. I hear that they're working on creating an inventory." You may never see me again, and at that time I never thought I'd see you again, he said, but the boy was long asleep. In the front lot of the blue house, a tall stretch of hedges was overgrown. In the narrow driveway, a thin stretch of accidental grass grew between the walls of concrete, broken gravel on the edges, the aggregate pebbles turning to sand. When the apples dropped, come autumn, he'd rake them, brown and rotting, caked in broken rock and sand, the rich fermented scent, the tines scraping against the ground, he'd drag them into the canal ditches. When you were born, the father said, it was terrifying. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. From the birthing center with the midwives, they rushed us to the emergency room. I said prayers, even though there was only the slightest faith of God, anything in me. Praised be you, my Lord, through Sister Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us and who produces varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Canticle of the Sun, Francis of Assisi, verses 25 through 28. I started signing papers, the father said. Please, God, let our flower bloom. When the heart is racing, pounding so hard it feels that death is imminent, how long do we wait? 
that festering fear, a massive drum against the chambers pounding, vibrating through the neural highway of our cortices, our lungs open for relief. You, son, are suffocating. The cord wrapped around your neck, the father said. There was blood everywhere. I was looking through the blue curtain. It hung like a shower curtain, wrapped around the bed in an oval between us. I saw blood everywhere. The father swallowed clearing his throat, asking himself, do I have a sore throat? Blood on the hands, blood on the floor, blood is life. The nurse was wrapped in blue from head to toe. P-P-E, the perforations in the blue wardrobe, everything needs to breathe. You were gasping for air, the father said. She handed you to me and I held you for a second. She snatched you back and like a lie you might tell to someone that you loved. It all happened so fast, the father said. Your lips were blue. You cried, but not like you should have cried. It was a gurgling cry, a gasping for air cry. Metal, everything was metallic. Bloody baby gurgling in the arms of the nurse in perforated blue, being placed on a cold sheet of shiny gray stainless steel, calculated responses. Methodical, life-saving responses. Unemotionally, her decisions were precise and accurate. As she reached for the suction bulb, the father's heart nearly exploded, her fingers pinching the bulb. Releasing instantly the suction, her hand pulling back, a twist of the wrist, fingers squeezing the bulb. Fluid flying into the gaze she held in her other hand. Thick plate of plexiglass off his side, there stands a man, his open palms pressed against the glass, internal heat of his body, his palms cold against the glass, peering into the sterile room, stunned, artificial light buzzing throughout the room, every inch of space ablaze with light, the humming, everything illuminated, his warm breath against the plastic, a fog obscuring his vision. Distorting his seeing, pounding, the heart pounding. That time I nearly died trying to find you, the father said. I was learning to know my own strength. Pounding. Surveying the newborn unit, eyes darting left to right, frantically scanning. Pink cap, pink cap, blue cap, not the right blue cap. His lips, those aren't his lips. In a second, I saw he had his mother's lips. Pink cat, where's the blue cat? Where's our blue cat? Give it up again for Kevin, everybody. <laughs> Since you were all out there, I figure, and out there, I figure maybe I can take this mask off. I think it's safe. <laughs> right, right? I thought you were gonna be in quarantine, so you shave off your beard. This is safe, right? <laughs> No, they're going to have you report live variety show. <laughs> Which is funny because I actually went to do my hair before coming down to the show. And I forgot how to do my hair. <laughs> I haven't been doing my hair. I've been wearing a baseball cap. Because it's the only thing I have of baseball is a cap right now. Anyway. Aww. Oh, that's right. Everybody, all for baseball. Aww. All for all the, all for Chinese food buffets. Oh, what else? What else, Colin? What else should we go oh, for? Um, Juco. Oh, well, that's baseball. Juco's just baseball. <laughs> We've already on for baseball. Um, Let's on oh, for voting at the voting booth. Oh. Oh. Except in Michigan, right? Right. <laughs> anyway. Let's get right back to it, everybody, and give it up for our friend Roy Catlin.
really be where I can really be keeping my life away
six feet away from you. Um, I'd say, I'd say about um, six feet. Maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, we probably shouldn't. Okay. Okay. Well, you can tell me about your film. Okay, I'll tell you about my film. <laughs> it's been seen before at Cavalcade. It's a good one. It's a short one. Rerun. It's a rerun. Uh, I'll tell you that I was inspired by a little trinket at the True Value that was for sale for like a dollar fifty, and I just thought, man, that would be a f that, that would be funny, and that's what I did. So, Colin's video about a trinket, a True Value. Enjoy Colin's film, everybody. I don't know, Doc. I just worry about everything. What if when you die, it's actually a worse place? What if this was actually the good thing? When people are like, doesn't get any better than this. What if they were right? What if this is it? Because no one knows what comes after this. Most people, they want to believe it's going to be better, but what if it's not? Where I'm going to be at a party and of course, I'm going to like use the toilet, blow it up, and then it's going to break, and I won't be able to flush, and everyone will know it's me. What if you're walking around just being a gigantic social faux pas, and you don't even realize it? No one's telling you. What if you try hard to not offend someone, and that offends them? I'm afraid that the words in my mind that I think I'm saying are not. And so I think I'm saying, hello, you look very nice today. And what I'm saying is, you look like a big fat jerk. And that's why, and which I don't understand why. Why are you angry? I'm just trying to be nice. And so the words that are in my mind are not being translated by my mouth or being translated incorrectly and they're coming out wrong and I don't realize it. 
I'm afraid someone's going to play a prank on me and remove my airbag and replace it with whipped cream. And then like snip my, uh, my brake line. And then so I hit something and then <laughs> instead of the airbag deploying, it's just whipped cream in my face. So it's like the ultimate pie in the face. It's like a final joke. I'm afraid I'm going to find a spider in my shoes. Not like a little spider in my shoes, but a spider wearing my shoes. And I'll have to fight him for it. I'm afraid of gymnasiums. I'm afraid of pimento cheese. I'm afraid of a bead of sweat making its way down a well-defined pectoral muscle. I'm afraid of garbanzo beans. Garbanzo. I'm afraid that I wasted my youth. I'm also afraid that I didn't. I'm afraid I'm going to get termites. What if I accidentally cease to exist? What if I can tell it's not butter? I'm afraid I've misunderstood the Fleetwood Mac lyric this whole time with the don't stop thinking about tomorrow. What if they meant don't stop thinking about tomorrow? And it was a misplaced comma. What if steak and chocolate is actually healthy for you? I'm afraid of accidentally slapping the president. <laughs> what if I like meet the president? And I don't mean to, and then just... <laughs> uh, <laughs> social situations. <laughs> I'm afraid that I think I'm talking, but you can't see my mouth moving. I'm afraid that all of these fears that I have aren't even mine. I'm afraid I'm just some representation.
all the way from Baltimore. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings from Baltimore to my friends in Fruta. This is a song called Deep in the Heart. And I never know exactly how it's going to come out because it's a... Uh, it's too new to have a a uh, strict form yet. Now with 
Thanks, guys. Have fun. All the way from Baltimore, folks, right? How, how great is that? This might be a new thing we do at the Variety Show, 26 states away. Yeah. All right, we have a, a great number getting ready to come out for you by our friend Michael Gregg.
Give it up for Michael Gregg, everybody. Yes, big fans of Michael Gregg here in the house. And uh, I thought I'd take this time to tell you folks other things we do here at Cavalcade besides have an online variety show once every 2020. Um, <laughs> We have this show once a month. Usually we have people in chairs, like I said. We also have other concerts here, um, several a month. We also have lectures. We have all kinds of stuff that we do here. We have Deep Tea. It's a monthly group of people that get together and just talk about philosophical things. We have open mics, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Find us on Facebook. Find us on the internet, cavalcadefruta.com. Instagram? Yes. Instagram, Snapchat, Tinder? No. Not Snapchat. No. So find us on some of that. Just Google Cal Clav Clade. See? Cavalcade. It's here. Click on the link. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot of stuff going on here at Cavalcade. Check us out. Uh, next month's May variety show is likely it's going to be just like this. So tune in next May when we come back for a show. Um, and uh, plan to make uh, uh, attendance here at Capital Cave this summer sometime. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Ken. Hey, Colin. Have you seen our new uh, fire extinguishers? I have not seen our new fire extinguishers. They're pretty amazing. And they have, they have labels on them that say that they're official. We have official fire extinguishers here, folks. Yep. Yes, we have a fire exit right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. If there is a fire, she told us in the beginning. If there's a fire, you just go out right there. <laughs> or you can go out the back door if you, if it's closer. Okay. Now that we've got all those bills paid, let's get back to the music. Whether from Greg Luck and John Ballantyne. Now, there's nothing left. 
left, but still somehow look for me and find that I'm not there. I let it go away. Where do I go? and John, everybody. Yeah. That was my favorite comeback to me of the night. Yeah, just put that, throw that out. It didn't work. It didn't all work. Thanks, everybody. How about Josh Matthews? He's been playing Cavalcade Variety shows a long time. But tonight, from Louisiana. Oh, from Louisiana, that's like... Okay, how about Josh Matthews, everybody? From Louisiana, that one. That's like... That depends on where you fly, a couple states away. Yeah, they don't all work. They don't all land. I know there's people at home laughing. Thank you. Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing healthy and whatnot. Um, I'm Josh Matthews, um, you might remember me. I moved to Louisiana, I haven't been able to go to the last few variety shows, but I was able to make this one. And so, anyway, um, one of my favorite songwriters passed away this week from uh, battling the coronavirus. And so I wanted to play my favorite song by him here it goes. When I was a child, my family would travel and down to western Kentucky where my parents were born And there's a backwards old town It's often remembered So many times My memories are warm So daddy, won't you take me back To Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River Where paradise lays I'm sorry my son 
lurch you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train has hauled it away Sometimes we travel right down the Green River to the abandoned old prison down by Adria Hill where the air smelled like snakes and we'd shoot with our pistols the empty pot bottles is all we could kill so daddy won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where paradise lays I'm sorry my son but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train has hauled it away And then the coal company came with the world's largest shovel. And they tortured the timber and stripped all the land. And they dug for the coal until the land was forsaken. And they wrote it all down as the progress of man. So daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise lays I'm sorry my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train has hauled it away When I die, let my ashes float down the Green River. Let my soul float on down to the Rochester Dam. And I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting, just five miles away from wherever I am. All right, thanks. All right, we've come down to our last performance of the night, and I want to thank all of you and all of you for coming to our show. It's very special when you come to our show. We appreciate it. Uh, this this uh, theater here is here for the community. Um, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and uh, enjoy Colin and Tori.
but you're stuck out in the same old storm again. You hold tight to your umbrella, darling. I was trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. Give it up for Colin and Tori, everybody. And how about that special appearance from Chutney? Yes! yes. <laughs> well, that's our show. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you real soon.